All right, welcome to section five, where we're going to be getting into a little bit more advanced CSS here. Uh, this is more for framework and positioning and things like that that you're going to find a little more useful as far as laying out a web page. So first thing I want to show you is what's called a float tag. Now it's a little bit ambiguous on what it really means. I would, wouldn't say that it floats anything. It's more used for positioning to create like multiple columns as opposed to text just kind of running into the next line. Well, that's how CSS works right now. Basically you would have like one big row for, so let's go ahead and use this as a, for instance, um, I took away most of our styles right now. I took away all of our styles and just have this div tag wrapped around this paragraph of text right now. And if I hit save and I come back to my browser, this is what I'm talking about. All the text just runs all the way across the edge of the page unless it's defined to not run across. So let's say we had what we had before. Let's go ahead and create a new style. I just create a class called um, column. All right, let's open that up and close that. And then within there, we will say width equals, uh, just for instance, let's say, let's say 200 pixels wide. We'll keep it real simple right now. All right, so if I come back, oops, what did I do wrong here? Oh, I didn't apply it. So within my div tag here, I need to actually apply that class. So I'll say class equals, all right, class equals column. I'm gonna save that. Now I'm gonna go and see what it looks like in my browser. And you can see I've got this one nice big column of text. And it's only 200 pixels wide. So what I should be able to do is go ahead and copy that. And let's give it a couple of returns there so we can see and we've got another column. Now this should align right next to it, right? Okay, instead it just drops down to the next line. So again, any kind of div tag, anything that you're really doing in HTML and CSS, it's just always gonna go down to the next line by default. That's just kind of how it works. So that's where float tags come in. I'm gonna show you how those work. Now again, they don't really like to let text and text boxes just float around. They actually are used to align like to the left or to the right of something else. So applying them is actually really easy. It's more of just really understanding how they work and when to use them is the more difficult part. So within my column style here, I'm gonna say float, and let's go ahead and just say float it over to the left. And what that's gonna do is gonna say, okay, this first guy here, let's float him to the left, and the next column will float it to the left, or just to the right of that first column, but again, aligning it to the left. So these should stack like a couple books right next to each other. So I'm gonna save that, I'm gonna come back to my browser and hit refresh, and now I've got two columns of text that are aligning themselves right next to each other. So just so you see the order of them, I'm gonna put like a number right there and two, so we can see that they are aligning in order. So one and two. And I, could, and I could just as easily float these over to the right as I did the left. There are times to use that, but for the most part, you're gonna be floating things to the left. That's just how these columns usually get laid out. So within there, you can apply the same kind of styles that we used with our other things that we've done up to this point. Maybe we want to add some space in between these two areas. Now this is where that box position that I showed you earlier is gonna come into play. What I could do is say, all right, my width of this column is only 200 pixels here. So if I were to apply padding to it, the text would be less than 200 pixels wide. The box itself would be 200 pixels wide, but because I was padding, which comes in, it's gonna make that text area a lot smaller. Whereas if I were to use a margin, which goes pushes to the outside there, that's gonna give me more room and allow me to keep that 200 pixel width. So let's do this. Let's go ahead and add a background color just so we can see these two boxes. And let's go ahead and just make it just something kind of light. I'm gonna make it a gray. All right, nice light gray. Let's save that and see what that looks like. All right, so you can see that those two gray backgrounds are just touching each other so it looks like one big block, although they're really not. Now let's go ahead and add some margin. What we can do is maybe because I like it being tucked up against the left hand side of the page and the top, I don't want to apply a margin everywhere. Maybe I just want to apply some right hand side margin to push these two columns off of each other. So let's say margin on the right hand side, and let's say 20 pixels. I'm gonna give me a nice gap in between them. I'm gonna come back and hit refresh. Now you can see 
got this gray box, nice little white 20 pixel width there in between the two columns. And um, my, but my text is still going right to the edge of that gray. So in that case, maybe I do want to apply just a little bit of padding. I'll do that in all directions. So I'll just say regular padding and I'll say five pixels. So let's save that and we'll come back. There you go, that looks a little bit better. So that's how you would create a couple of columns of text within your document. Now one thing I wanna show you that kind of goes along with this a lot of times is I'm gonna create just one more line of text. I'm gonna call this one three, just so you can see it. Now I'm not gonna apply a div tag to it or anything like that. I'm just gonna hit save. If I come back to my document, now you can see that this actually aligns the left as well. And it's just the way that the text gets put in there. It's still kind of allowing this text to kind of align around this text box right here. So if I really wanted that to the next line down, if I wanted to clear it, I could hit returns and paragraph returns all day long. It's really not gonna push it down the way I want it to. What you have to do is add a clear. So what I like to do is create a new class called clear because I like to use this one over and over a lot of times and open and close it and the actual class itself that you're going to use the actual attribute is called clear so what's going to do is clear the area that i'm applying this to and i can say to the left hand side to the right hand side but for the most part i always just add both i want to clear both sides of it and i'm going to save that oh don't need to save it right now because i still need to actually apply it and what i do is i'm just going to copy this to Make it a little bit quicker here. Now I'll apply a div tag and a class called clear okay. and apply it right there. Now what I'm doing is basically putting like a return in between these two paragraphs, column two and what would be column three right here. So I save that, I'm gonna come back and hit refresh and my text broke down to the next line. It cleared it down to the next line. So that's how you use float tags and clear tags. Again, I showed you both in the same video because they usually go hand in hand, so hopefully that helps you out.